home to help protect staff. Peter Kavanagh is Regional Secretary for Unite, the union in London, and represents transport staff. Hello to you, Mr Kavanagh. Thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. Just looking back at my notes uh, from Steve Khan yesterday, he said the advice is quite clear. Only people in care situations should be using PPE. So he suggested that uh, transport workers do not fall into that category. What would you say in response? There's been uh, World Health Organization and uh, Public Health England advice that um, that really sort of states quite clearly that uh, frontline medics are the people who require PPE. My view on this is that I think one thing this emergency has uncovered very rapidly is that there are a whole range of what we describe as frontline essential workers. And what we're calling for is that this government uh, mobilises um, a, a huge sort of army of manufacturing workers who are currently furloughed, uh, they're not at work, um, to actually manufacture adequate protective equipment for all frontline workers, all those who are coming face to face in touch with the public, whether they be supermarket workers, care workers, going into people's homes or in, in, in care homes, and now, of course, transport workers. The statistics that we've, we've heard in London, nine bus workers, is deeply worrying. And, you know, our members uh, continue to go to work. They understand the critical role they're playing, getting nurses and doctors to hospitals. But they, too, are demanding every safety measure that is required. But are... I suppose one of the arguments might be that uh, bus drivers particularly and tube drivers, they are in a plastic cocoon, if you will, protected from the public. So uh, that PPE would not necessarily help them further. Yeah, we've been working very hard. United's been working really hard with the uh, private operators who uh, who operate the, uh, the bus system in London and with Transport for London and indeed the Mayor's Office to introduce a whole range of measures. The assault screens that bus drivers have, we've, we've got them all sealed up now. Uh, we've, we've introduced sanitizer. We've, we've said that the seats behind the drivers should be out of bounds. And, and yesterday, we were very pleased that Transport for London, the Mayor's Office, have now um, heeded our call uh, that the front door loading should stop, although it's only on a trial basis at the moment. We are saying that that trial basis must be rolled out right across London now so that passengers board on the central and the rear doors on those buses that have got them uh, and, and do not come into contact with drop. I think the statistics speak for themselves. We've got a similar number that have sadly passed away in the NHS where there are 1.3 million workers. London Buses has 20 odd thousand workers and we've seen nine deaths. We've also had deaths in Bristol. Uh, in, in the Midlands and Birmingham, and we have a number of our members who are in intensive care in very, very serious conditions. So everything needs to be done to protect these, these people who are out there, making sure that essential workers are getting to their places of work. But not only at work, of course, um, that your members uh, are vulnerable, like the rest of us are, when they're not working. Absolutely. Uh, no one is claiming that, uh, you know, the virus was contracted in each and every case while at their place of work. But the statistic is extraordinary. I did an interview yesterday with, a, with, with another driver who was on the programme with me. And, you know, it's the sacrifices that people are making. This guy who, uh, who, who joined me was saying that he has a four-year-old child and he is currently staying at the home of a friend because he's too frightened to go home. He hasn't hugged his child for two weeks now. So it's the personal sacrifices that our members are making because they know that their job must continue. They know that the buses and the tubes need to uh, roll to get people to their places of work. So we do believe there are additional hazards, people boarding buses, uh, coughing and spluttering, even speaking. So we've done everything we can so far, but we think we've got to go further and we've got to go faster now. There can be no time for trials. We've got to roll this out now right across London, but also outside of London. OK, it's uh, good to talk to you. Um, I'm sure that your members appreciate everything that you're doing for them, but this is a very challenging time. Thank you very much.